The Alex drawers from IKEA are tremendously popular. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble them, as well as give you some ideas of uh, how to modify and use them in different setups. IKEA is well known for their affordable yet very useful products. The Alex George fits right into that description. The Alex George come in a few versions with the same dimensions, so you can mix and match them as part of whatever use case you have. The most well known Alex drawer has a total of 5 drawers, 2 narrow ones on top and 3 larger ones at the bottom. In addition you get the file cabinet version and an Alex storage unit. In this video I'll show you how to assemble both the most common version as well as the storage unit. We'll also look at how to modify the Alex drawers for extra storage space and desk height as well as a quick look at another IKEA product that fits in perfectly with organizing your drawers. Let's get started. We'll start by assembling the Alex drawer unit. You'll need some tools, a rubber hammer is useful, and if used correctly avoids damaging the wood of the Alex drawer. A slotted screwdriver as well as a Phillips screwdriver are absolutely useful, and some kind of tool to open the package the drawers come in could come in handy. Your fingers and hands may be handier than a knife or scissors, so you make the call on how you open the package. There's nothing that explodes if you rip some of the cardboard. There's an assembly manual in the package and I highly recommend taking a proper look at that manual before you go bananas trying to figure things out. It saves you a lot of time in the end. Personally, I would like to take all the parts and put them in a structured manner on the floor. This helps to ensure that I have all the parts and can check them off versus the assembly manual. All the screws, nuts and bolts and what have you are in one plastic bag in the package. It's a good idea to sort and count them before you start building so you're sure you have everything. The manual has a good overview of all the pieces so you can easily count them and compare between what you've sorted and what the manual says should be there. Pay particular attention to these camlock nuts which come in two different sizes for different purposes. They're easy to mix up at this stage. So there you have it, the Alex drawer in all its unassembled glory. Let's start with the top and bottom parts. Notice the different pre-drilled holes which tells you what's top and what's bottom. We'll start by putting these camlock screws in place on the two sides of the drawer unit. You could potentially use the drill of some sorts, but there's really no need for anything but manual force right here. We then add the typical IKEA wooden dowels to the back side of the drawer unit for assembly with the sides. Then it's time for these camlock nuts. Remember that there's two different sizes of them. Use the larger one now. The camlock nuts go in these holes and note that you sometimes might have to get rid of some wood chips before assembling them properly. Now it's time to put camlock screws into the top part, just make sure you've got the top and not the bottom. Once again the IKEA wooden dowels or pegs are relevant, put them in the top of the sides of the Alex unit. Do note that the newer assembly instructions might have a step here that differs slightly due to the assembly with the table, but you should be able to figure out, out if that's the case for you. In our case we continue by fastening the camlock nuts. Now it's time for the bottom part of the unit. Notice the holes here which is a dead giveaway for which part is the bottom. We put wooden dowels into the bottom of the sides and then simply smack the bottom on them. Then we're ready to use these longer screws with the allen key that comes in the box from IKEA.
Look how fast I'm at doing this. I better slow down. Once again, there's no need to use a drill or anything like that. Hand power should be more than sufficient here. These little pegs are the legs. They go in four holes slightly further in on the bottom side. Now it's time to start assembling the drawers themselves. Note that I start with the two narrow ones while the instructions might tell you to start with the three larger ones. For the two narrow drawers you use a combo of camlock screws and wooden dowels on the front part of the drawer. After attaching the sides of the drawers, attach the bottom. Notice that the bottom part is different in the back and front. You want the part of the bottom with a notch in it to face towards the front of the drawer. Slide the bottom part in, tighten the nuts and attach the back of the drawer as well. Use the plastic screws to attach the sides to the back. A rubber hammer comes in handy for completing this task. That's it for the narrow drawers themselves. It's on to the three larger drawers now. As with the narrow drawers, start with camlock screws in the front. There's four camlock screws for each front part of the drawer this time. Once they're screwed in, you slide in the sides of the drawer. Use uh, camlock nuts on the sides to fasten the sides to the front and see if you can do it as fast as this. Now slide in the bottom of the drawer. Get the back part of the drawer in place and attach it with plastic screws hammered in from the sides. For getting the drawers attached properly to the Alex unit, I suggest dragging the metal parts on the sides of the unit all the way out before placing the drawer onto the metal tracks. These inner drawer Euro screws are tiny and go inside the drawer. Align them between the hole in the drawer and the metal track before you start screwing them. And there you go. You can now slide the first drawer in to make sure it functions as intended. For the rest of the drawers it's more of the same. If you've got the first one it's merely a repetition with the rest. Depending on when and where you bought your Alex drawers, please note that your manual could have either a different numbering of the various steps or a few extra steps. It should however be pretty near identical, just consult your assembly manual if you're unsure of any differences. Note that there might be a wooden dowel or two left over when you're done. This is uh, normally not your fault, but simply IKEA making sure there's more than enough. 
All right, let's move on to next Alex uh, unit version we'll assemble in this video. There's the Alex uh, file cabinet and the Alex storage unit. We'll assemble the storage unit, which is very useful as a complement to the Alex storage in just about any setup. As with the Alex drawer, the box from IKEA contains just about all you need, including an assembly manual. It is not identical to the drawer's manual. Personally, I like to make sure everything's in the box, so I start by sorting and counting everything down to the last bolts. As you can see, there are some parts that are identical to the Alex Store, but also some parts that are unique to the Alex Storage unit. It's also worth noting that what's up, down, forwards and backwards on the different sides of the unit has slight differences. So pay attention to those details in the manual. Start by screwing in the cam lock screws on the inner slash back part of the sides and then the wooden dowels on the back itself. Once that's done, you attach the back to the sides, just smack them together with your hand for now. It's time for the cam lock nuts, which there's fortunately only one size of for this Alex storage unit. You might have to clear out some excess wood from the holes to be able to fit in the cam lock nuts uh, properly. Use the slotted screwdriver to tighten the camlock nuts to the camlock screws that you put in there earlier. Now we move on to the top part of the unit and start by attaching the camlock screws before putting wooden dowels into the sides facing the top part. Smack the top part onto the sides and get ready to put in six more camlock nuts to firmly attach the whole thing. We move on to the bottom of the storage unit. Make sure you have the side with the most holes in facing down and start with putting it four wooden dowels in the bottom of the sides. These holes that are further to the inside are for the legs and should be facing down away from the rest of the build. These six long metal screws go in from the bottom. Use the IKEA Allen key to drive them in properly. Look at me go, it's like 10 times normal people speed. It's finally time to finish the bottom part by adding the legs. The legs are these uh, four stumpy looking black things. Use a rubber hammer to symbolically get them tight. We move on to the door and this is when you should always, always remember which side you want the door to open to. There's two hinges that attach to the door itself and two that attach to the storage unit and then obviously these parts attach to each other. Start with the ones on the door and use a Phillips screwdriver to attach them to the door. Now it's time for the ones that attach to the storage unit side. This is when you put them on the side you want the door to open towards, not the side you want them to open from. You use the Phillips or cross if you like screwdriver and tiny metal screws to attach the hinges properly to the side of the Alex storage unit. Line up the door and side hinges and attach them with a screw in the middle. Please note that you might have to adjust this a few times to get the door working exactly how you want it to do. It. 
There's uh, one shelf for the Alex storage unit and it rests on these four metal shelf pins that can be placed in the pre-drilled holes many places inside the storage unit. There's also some small rubber stickers or bumper pads. Use a couple of them in the front of the shelf to act as a bumper between the door and the shelf. Finally, there's this uh, plastic cover for the hole in the lower back. Just use a rubber hammer to smack it into place. That's it really, but uh, what I haven't shown you is how to attach the Alex units to a table or a countertop. I'll show you a way to do that now. In this case, I've done like many others before me and bought these uh, furniture legs off of Amazon. They are great to use on the top of the Alex drawers, between the drawers and your table or countertop. First, I measure where I want them. I measure from the outermost uh, forward screw hole, and in this case it's uh, one centimeter or a little less than half an inch from both uh, the front and the side of the Alex drawer. I do this on all sides and use a pencil to mark the spot before I use an awl or a brad awl, I guess, to make pilot holes for the screws to go in. I then make uh, sure that the pilot holes are deep enough to avoid any issues when I actually start screwing in the furniture legs. I only screw in the one screw in each uh, outer furniture leg hole first. This makes it easier to adjust them later in the process if I need to do so. At this point it might be smart to check that the screws don't go through the inside top of the drawer, or at least only marginally do so, and that's what I'm doing here. If you're happy with the placement of the furniture legs, this is the time to make the pilot holes on the inside and continue to fasten the legs to the top of the Alex drawer. Note that there are four screw holes for each furniture leg, but I uh, chose to only use two of them. Whether you use uh, two or more is entirely up to you, but I highly recommend using at least two. There are furniture legs of different sizes available. These give you 10 centimeters or 4 inches between the top of the drawer and the table. That's like an open shelf in itself. I use this space for storing headphones, cable management, power strips, USB hubs, and even a tiny computer fits with space to spare. You can obviously use the rubber pads IKEA gives you for attachment of a table and the Alex drawers. And I have that for one desk, but I prefer using the legs when I can. Finally, we'll add a product from IKEA called uh, Gråsidan as an organizer in the Alex drawers. Gråsidan, which is uh, Swedish for the grey side, is simply a bunch of small boxes designed to fit the Alex drawers and help you organize things in the drawers. I find these very handy and particularly like to use them for the top two narrow drawers. They're great for compartmentalizing very smaller items that you might have laying around like uh, pens or extra cords, USB sticks, post-it notes, etc. So, there you have it. I hope this video has been uh, useful to you, and please feel free to leave a uh, like and comment below if you have any feedback to me. Thanks for watching.